thank you, uh, Dr. Padma. Thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Somashila. Such a brilliant uh, meeting she has uh, arranged. And thank you, AIOS, for giving me this opportunity. Now, I do not have any financial uh, interest in this presentation. Now, this is basically a clinical pathological cases. All of you have seen my previous speaker has shown a lot of uh, slides, histopathological slides, uh, biopsy pathology examples. These are so wonderful. Just to see this case. Now, this may be a repetition of earlier case where you can see that white eye, but there's a convex hypopian with a white pupillary. Now, immediately the masquerades come into mind and obviously uh, this is a retinoblastoma case where uh, retinoblastoma is seen in 51 weighted images in MRI. Now, in this situation, you can do a parasynthesis and hyperchromatic nuclei uh, with this retinoblastoma cell can be seen. Then immediately the enucleation and other protocol for the retinoblastoma can be done and to, uh, in these patients. Now, in our two publications, we have seen such unsuspected uh, uh, retinoblastoma in few cases uh, in our Northeast Indian population. The second case is very, very interesting. A 23-year female presented with redness, pain, photophobia for one month. There was no history of trauma in the right eye. There was history of tricot injection posterior subtenon given uh, in 2015. Uh, the vision was in the right eye counting finger one meter. MRI done at Shillong, Meghalaya showed a ciliary body melanoma. In this uh, uh, clinical picture, you can see hypopia and there was also a steroid now, this can ultrasound and UVM showed a ciliary body mass and in T1 weighted images and T2 weighted images in uh, axial and sagittal section of MRI, you can see a ciliary body lesion here. Now, uh, uh, for differential diagnosis, melanoma was thought, uh, retinoblastoma, medulloepithelioma, hematogenous malignancy, and infectious and endothelitis was thought in these cases. Infectious panel were normal. Uh, peripheral blood showed some sort of anemic changes uh, in these cases. Enucleation was planned in these cases, and the enucleation I thought showed exuded retinal detachment here, and with the lesion there and increase in the ciliary body region here. Now, these cases has a scleritis as well as uh, ciliary body involvement. You can see in the high power objective of uh, microscope, you can see there are large plasma cells, okay? So initially we thought whether we are dealing with plasma cytoma. Ceram electrophoresis showed uh, some fraction involvement, but here this uh, polymorphic, this is both uh, CD20 and CD3 were positive in this case. So it is a, uh, not a tumor, but something else. CD138 for plasma cell was positive and HMB45 was negative, uh, ruling out melanoma in this case. Now, IgG4 was done uh, out of the plasma cell, which was around 35% of the cases, Garci SRL reduction. Now, bone marrow examination showed a, a anemic changes, the treatment was given, and we published this case in 2015 as IgG4-related intraocular inflammation, masquerading as ciliary body melanoma. But story does not end here. 2015, patient presented with severe inflammation in the left eye. Then patient was initially treated with oral steroid in Guwahati. Then patient wanted to take a second opinion. I asked them to visit uh, uh, my mentor, Professor Jyotin Mabishwat at Chennai. Now these are the Chennai documentation where they have seen increased retinochoroidal elevation. There's a fluid in the subtenon spaces. And this is the patient in this 2001. You can see there was a scleritis. There was a, uh, some sort of hypopion as well. As, and patient dropped down very drastically, Professor Biswas was telling me so much aggressive lesion and she dealing with such a uh, patient, he was very caring about the patient. Now we see this was, tap was done again from the left eye and it showed mixed inflammatory pathology. Patient was started on uh, PRAT4 as well as continuation of uh, oral steroid along with atrophy. Whole body PET, PET, PET scan was done Professor Biswas in academic way, uh, and this patient was running short of money in Chennai, uh, and the result was that it was normal. Now this is says whether IgG4 disease has have such an aggressive uh, outcome 
we are not sure, we are not know the outcome of the disease, but now the patient is on follow-up. The third case is a 28-year-old uh, man with dimness of vision in the right ear for five months. Previously, he was diagnosed to have ulcerative colitis with GIT polyp. Anterior chamber was quite, vitreous cells were large in the left eye with age plus two present. Ocular imaging showed diffuse choroidal mass in the right eye. And the paralysis was, uh, the vitreous step was done by vitreous surgeon, it showed atypical cells. In follow-up, again, ultrasound was done and it showed a laterally spreading tumor and it was enucleated. You can see a lot of heterogeneous tissue with a pigmented tumor and this uh, with retinal detachment in this case. We have done uh, in uh, gross examination, the melanocytic cells were perivenular, pericentric involvement uh, along the veins was noted. There's a gross was involvement was seen in this case. Now we see there's a melanocytic uh, proliferation was seen in these cases. Interestingly, if you see, the, there was a sparing of the choreo capillaries, which was very interesting. HMG45, also you can see the sparing of choreo capillaries. Now, this was a nuclear eyeball revealed evidence of reduced evil melanocytic proliferation, but he presented with a dimness of vision in the left eye. So, what happened? There was a fundus was normal. We have done ERG. ERG showed a uh, scotopic response diminished in this case. This is a post operative uh, patient with a prosthesis in the right eye. And this patient was having a pigmented lesion in the glands penis uh, and is on follow up. Uh, so this is a very interesting case uh, which we have seen and in published in a uh, Professor Nema's textbook. Now see clinical pathological correlation and immunohistochemistry of box family Harada's disease. Probably this was the first report from India where VKH uh, pathology was seen in a 40 uh, years old uh, person where uh, diffuse uh, stromal choroiditis was seen with a photoreceptor degeneration and RP uh, undulation. What you see in the OCT, the multi-pocket uh, fluid accumulation in the outer retinal layer, this was seen in the, these cases uh, with, uh, in histopathology. The T cell was much more than the B cell in these cases. Sympathetic ophthalmia also, we have seen few number of cases. This is one of the cases, uh, again, 24 year female, which had a, a chicken pox history and we have reported the infectious cause, probably inciting a, a, a uh, bilateral sympathetic ophthalmia. Now this has a stromal choroiditis with a uh, sparing of choreocapillary. CD3 was positive, uh, uh, then CD20 cases. We, recently we have uh, uh, one paper is accepted by we have found CD20 is positive uh, rather than CD3 uh, because of that immunogenesis. Histopathology and molecular pathology diagnosis for acute retinal necrosis. This is again Shankar Shankar Dev Nathalai. Professor Bishwas sent me the uh, enucleated eyeball to me uh, for the and this patient had a PCR for nested PCR for Bacilla Jostar as well as real time PCR done. And we have documented in our lab the in frozen stain, the multinucleated giant cell, and in histopathology, the giant cell of a Bacilla Jostar infection. Parasite disease, as Padma told, is a heart in my heart. Now, this is a rare case of anterior chamber diaphoresis. You can well appreciate it. And we have seen the patient live. Uh, and followed by scanning electron microscopy and NRG dispersive spectroscopy. What Sorry to interrupt, sir. Yeah, uh, yeah. If you could uh, uh, end in the next seconds. 30 seconds. Two seconds. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. 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 Professor Ratinam uh, et al. has shown that uh, various clinical examination and investigative procedure helpful for ocular inflammation. We have put live uh, examination of parasite is very, very important to take home message, biopsy pathology in India is, is very important. ACTF for cytology, vitreous step, tissue biopsy, choreoretinal biopsy, et cetera, can be a diagnostic. Molecular pathology, particularly for immunohistochemistry, molecular microbiology, particularly in PCR, as I've shown you, aid in the diagnosis. Scanning electron microscope with EDX can be helpful in parasitic evaders. Thank you for patient. I like to acknowledge Professor Biswas and Professor Islam and SSN lab. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving me extra time. Thank you.
you, Dr. Deepanka, for the enlightening talk on clinical pathological correlation, whatever we are seeing clinically, and you showed us with the histopathology to understand the disease much better. Thank you so much. Uh, now, can I ask you. questions to Deepanka? Yes. Thank you, Deepanka. That was a brilliant, brilliant talk. I have a couple of practical questions to you. Like, if yes. we have a patient, uh, they are not sure of the diagnosis, one eyed patient, and the opposite eye, I want to, you know, enucleate, which is a blind eye, but the patient, by and large, you know, they do not say yes right at the beginning. So, you do start steroids for the eye which you can save and you want to remove the eye from the opposite eye for making the diagnosis. What's initiating the steroids and doing enucleation say five, seven days later make a difference in the histological presentation of the disease? Yeah, that's very important question to understand the pathogenesis of sympathetic obtain. Not you see sympathetic obtain. Yeah. Anything. yeah. Anything, anything. Yeah. but but mostly the prototype of a penny weight is, is a sympathetic ophthalmia. Now, if you see but, the, but the age of one second, yeah. if I had a sympathetic ophthalmia, I will not want to enucleate the opposite eye. Yeah. I'm talking of the diagnostic dilemma here. You okay. know, okay. It, it's not okay. a straightforward sympathetic to me. Okay. I don't know what it is, and I know eventually the patient we will not be able to get much from the investigations. Are the investigation that patient is carrying with him is not leading us anywhere. So can I still give him IV methyl prep and do enucleation of the opposite eye after say five, seven days? Yeah, thing is that uh, first of all, we have seen a bilateral, for example, in the morning class today, I presented a number of cases of rubella eye disease. Now, these diseases are mostly a bilateral affection. Now, you see one case is around six years old boy had a bilateral uveitis, and the Elisha showed IgG4 for the rubella. Now, this is the case where the even the surgeon or the clinician want a diagnosis of the case. Now, they have chosen a eye, which is worst eye, and they have enucleated the eye, and the enucleated eye showed it, all the changes, the changes in the lens, changes in the uh, retinal pigment epithelium consistent with rubella. Now it helped in the diagnosis because if you see, even the simple lens changes in the rubella is so important because those lens changes retain nuclei in the lens can be a pathognomonic for the disease itself. So this gives a clue that you are, you are confirming your diagnosis. Secondly, the most important thing is that molecular biology, if you want to prove that or save the eye, for example, if you, but no. thing is that thing is that we take a old style to be enucleated. No, no, that I totally understand. I'm not asking you the importance. I'm just asking that if I'm planning to do the enucleation for diagnostic purposes, but patient is delaying it for whatever reason, can we start steroids in the meantime? For the steroid may not be answered for something. Suppose it is a disease causing by viral infection. So in this situation, suppose it is a case of a, any a virus, right? uh, that's, very all right. that's all. Then, then steroid starting will be very, very detrimental. For the patient, it can. No, lead I'm not talking about the patient. Is steroid starting that uh, some way affect the histopathologic results? Histopathology results affects because if you see, yeah, okay. one thing, yes, one thing is that I have told you a two example of sympathetic ophthalmia. One is that most of the sympathetic ophthalmia are T cell disease, CD3 positive, CD20 is less positive, but in some occasion. After three or four weeks of systemic steroid, the disease one goes to the chronicity, then the plasma cell take up and there may be B cell proliferation of the disease. So steroid may affect, immunosuppressive may affect in the immunogenicity of the disease condition. 
And there is a question from Dr. Gupta that would, uh, what would be the special technique for choroidal biopsy? And for me, that once you have done the biopsy with that special technique, what will be the special way you will uh, take that sample to the pathologist? Yeah, for example, if it is a uh, choroidal biopsy, if you, the vitreous surgeons, they are for you to give, the, I am not a vitreous surgeon. So by procedure, whether they are taking a retinochoroidal biopsy, that, or, or previously they have taken a vitreous biopsy or a vitreous step, for example, lymphoma case. Lymphoma, which are not diagnosed by a, a say, vitreous step. So you require a courier retinal biopsy. And these steps, when they send in the thing is that few cases, for example, if it's a retina tissue, it is very, very friable. Now getting a inclusion body in that active retinal tissue is a challenge. For example, if it is a active retinitis, where suppose it is a acute retinal necrosis caused by either a, a varicella zoster CMB or a herpes simplex virus. Now this tissue is very, very friable. Transfer of the tissue from the OT to the lab should be very fast, like lymphomas, lymphoma cells. Okay, it should be very fast. The so media, for, yeah, media, for example, the media, yeah, the, because uh, uh, because what I do, for example, in the enucleated eyeball, no, I see the retinal pigment epithelium taking a small chip out of it. I see so much pathology in retinal pigment epithelium because these are, if even the direct tissue from the OT can help me in diagnosis if the retinal pigment epithelium, if you dissect it out. This give me wide range of inflammation, even doing some special stain that we have innovated, a frozen direct staining can show you inclusion bodies there. It can show even a fungus there. Fungus can be picked up. I have picked up fungus number of cases by doing a just a drop of fluorescein over the tissue, whether it's a corneal tissue. Anka, whether sorry it's a for tissue. interrupting you. Sorry for interrupting you. My yes, question sir. was very, very pointed because I wanted to know if there is any talent exists in this country for doing choroidal biopsies. Retinal biopsies we have been doing for years. You know, we have been doing all that, which is retinal biopsy. Retinal biopsy is not a challenge. My question is very specific to obtaining a choroidal biopsy using either internal technique or using a trapdoor technique from the external surface, from the scleral side. So if, if you have, uh, you know, as a pathologist, you would know if anybody in the country is uh, you know, doing that coronal biopsy, because many a time you have those patients, you do whatever you can do, they don't respond. At that point of time, you want to have a history of pathological uh, diagnosis or help from the pathologist. You know, yeah, I that can, is what yeah. this actual question is. So yeah, I, I can, of, yeah, I can, I, I have a very limited access to the choroid, direct choroidal biopsy. Thing is that I have seen a no. biopsy of a cystic okay. sarcus lesion where from the scleral side they have moved inside the eye. Cystic sarcus lesion. No, Whereas no, they have different. taken. That's, yeah. that, that's okay. The banker, I did that 40 years ago. Yeah. That's not the question. The question is specific to choroid. I think uh, Vishali uh, understands the question very well. You know, I want to know if anyone in the country. Who are attending no, this I meeting. don't think I don't. You can ask Professor Bishwas in direct choroidal biopsy, but in tumor cases, I remember one case I remember of uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Lingam Gopal sir removing a retinoblastoma tumor by making a sclerotomy wound. Okay, in this situation, the choroid tissue can come, but directly choroidal tissue biopsy, I haven't got the same. So, but